This video is published under the Creative Commons license BY and CSA, which means attribution, non-commercial and share-alike. Third-party material has been used for which the permission is specified explicitly for every diagram, photograph or whatever has been used. Please mention the author as Andreas Pfennig, Products, Environment and Processes, Department of Chemical Engineering, Université de Liège, Belgium. A disclaimer applies. Welcome back to this video series on thermal unit operations. We are still in the section on general considerations and today I would like to introduce some shortcut methods and especially for a single stage and the cross-current multi-stage process. Before I show the details how to apply that, I would like to remind us of the basis because the basis is actually the same as we have been using uh, for the macap diagram. The, Macab, the generalized macap diagram that can be used for an arbitrary uh, process. And you remember this slide, presumably, that we have two major options to apply the macap method to. It's, uh, it's on the one hand side on a mass-based way and the secondly on a molar-based way. As mentioned already previously, if you choose the mass-based way, then everything has to be on mass basis. That is the flow rates, the concentrations, as well as the equilibrium information. Same holds, of course, for the molar basis. If you choose that, everything has to be consistent. And then you have two major options that you should not mix up, because I always like to mention with an industry corporation, or the industry actually came and asked us, they mixed that up and then they got funny results for the theoretical stages that they found in reality, and the reason was that they were mixing that. So actually, either you use the total flux, Assume equal counter transport, which has to be validated, of course, for the specific case on the mass or on a molar basis. If that is not fulfilled, you can switch nevertheless, but you increase the uncertainty of your prod, uh, procedure. Then, of course, you have to use mole or weight fraction, so a fractional concentration. And with that, you are more or less in a pseudo binary system. Binary system, strictly speaking, or if you have more components, you have to combine them into pseudo components that you can treat as a common uh, component. Then the weight fraction or the, the fractional concentration times the total flux is the flux of the component you are regarding, and you are in a two dimensional, uh, one dimensional concentration measure with, with this, with a binary system and a fractional composition, which means you can plot a two dimensional diagram for the Macap Thiel diagram and for the uh, shortcut method, it also means that you fully describe your equilibrium with just one single variable, your uh, corresponding fractional composition of one of the components. The other option is that you use the carrier flux and only the carrier flux with one transfer component and then, then you use the what is called Bancroft coordinates or, or loads or uh, mass or molar ratios. I want to call it load throughout the lecture because it's easiest, I guess. Uh, molar or mass load, mass load or molar load here. And then again, the mass load times the overall flux is the flux of the individual component. And that allows to, or that requires that you are doing a, your considerations in a ternary system because you have typically, of course, two fluxes, your counter current flux or cross current or whatever. So the two phases, they are having a carrier two carriers and you have the transfer component which is three component that's why you are in a ternary system and if you have more components then you have to group components to so-called pseudo components and then you have a pseudo ternary system. After having said that I would like to go to the next uh, slide so to speak to show you the basis that we want to use for setting up a shortcut method well, for single stage. For single stage you wouldn't actually typically call that a shortcut method, it's just two equations that solve the problem, the design problem for a single stage, but nevertheless it fits into the context of a shortcut method because then afterwards we will add more and more theoretical stages. So we have a single theoretical stage, the nomenclature is more or less the same as previously. In this case, because that is the case where this, these shortcut methods are typically applied to, is uh, that we have the carrier flow rates and the load, so that's why the compositions are written as capital letters as uh, previously. 
Um, and we see that, of course, those fluxes that are leaving that theoretical stage, it's one, so it's the only one available, they are carrying the index of the stage they are leaving, in this case one, and the entering streams are carrying the index uh, zero as the inlet streams. And then we can, of course, set up the balance with all the assumptions that we had previously, and I don't want to repeat them, it, uh, they are the same as for the Mercaptile method steady state, no reaction, whatever. These things are all fulfilled. And now we want to describe that, so to speak, on some, with the help of some uh, equations. As I said, for a single stage, calling that a shortcut method is a little bit far-fetched, but nevertheless it fits into that context. Now we have to know, of course, to the equilibrium. And for the equilibrium we can very generally write let me first write it in general terms and then we apply it later to specifically. We want to generally assume that we have the y equal the k times the x plus c. So in principle this is a partition coefficient times the x, but then we allow for a certain flexibilization. We allow an absolute term, an absolute c in this case. You will see that in most of the cases that we cancel actually, or it doesn't hurt if you have it, you can set it to zero, then you just have the partition coefficient in the system. And now we want to apply this according to the mesh principle that we have seen in the introduction, uh, introduction so mass balances, equilibrium, uh, and so on, and want to combine these things to solve the design task. And we first want to do that for a single stage. And there we apply, of course, the equilibrium to that single stage. And if we do that, we obtain, of course, y1. Remember, the fluxes leaving or the compositions leaving the theoretical stage were named after the, that uh, stage they are leaving. So it's y1 and x1, they are leaving the stage and by the definition of the theoretical stage they have to be in equilibrium. So it's the y1 which is in equilibrium with the x1, so that is k x1 plus c. Of course, if you want to do such a design, you have to know the k and the c for your specific system. As I said, c can be zero. In that case, the k is a partition coefficient. And now we also need to set up the balance, and one assumption was steady state, so zero equals. What was entering? Well, it's again the carrier flow rates times the loads. Uh, for the inlet streams, it was the, the, the concentrations or the loads that were carrying the index zero, so what is it? it was a g dot times a y zero plus an l dot times x zero. Now minus the leaving streams, and that is apparently the uh, well, I should be consistent with the order, so to speak. That's a g dot times a y1 minus the l dot times an x1. Then we have apparently, well, we have two equations, and they're actually only two unknowns because the inlet things we should be knowing, otherwise we can't do a design. So the only variables that are unknown are the x1 and the y1. The, well, one of the g dot or l dot is typically specified in a typical design task. That's the stream that you want to treat, so that has to be given. And the other one is actually following from economic uh, considerations after that on a larger iteration loop. So for each of these calculations, you know uh, your uh, flow rate. And since that's uh, the, only the carrier flow rates, they are constant throughout this um, theoretical stage. So g dot inlet and outlet are identical, so we just call the g dot, same for the l dot. And now we can combine these two equations, we can replace the y's by the x's, so we can replace the y1 by the x1 in this case, what do we obtain? And as always I say, better write one equation too much than uh, one too little, because otherwise you may only, if you do things too much in your head, then you possibly uh, make additional errors, which we want to avoid, so we have the zero equals, the g dot y0 plus l dot x0, nothing to substitute. Now the y1 is substituted, so we have a minus g dot k x1 minus g dot c minus l dot x1. And what we want to do now, actually, we want to solve that for the x1. In order to do that, uh, we do a typical uh, step. We divide by the g dot. 
we know from Macap Thiele, L dot over G dot is a relevant variable, so dividing by G dot, we see directly that we obtain this L dot over G dot, which of course then makes sense, of course, in the principal uh, considerations. So zero equals Y zero plus L dot over G dot X zero uh, minus, and now let me first write this term, this is a C, because the last two terms both contain the x1, so we can combine them, so it's a minus x1 times, well, divided, we divide it by g dot, this x1 is here, so there's, this is just a k, so it's k. The minus has been dealt with here already, and of here, we, here we have now, of course, the l dot over g dot, x1 is already here, so it's plus an l dot over g dot. And we can solve that, of course, for the x1. Yeah, and if we do that, we obtain x1 equals y0 minus c plus l dot over g dot times x0 divided by k plus capital K l dot over g dot. And at the same time, we know we can still see it on the top that the y1 equals kx1 plus c. And with these two equations, we are able to calculate the x1 and y1 from the inlet composition, x0, y0, from the streams that are passing through the theoretical stage and the information on the equilibrium, namely the k and the c. With that, we are able to calculate the compositions at the exit of the single stage. And that is, of course, allowing us to design that single stage process. So these are the two equations that we need which get a big box. Well, so far so good. For a single stage, as, as I said, it's calling that the shortcut method is a little bit far-fetched, a little bit exaggerating the, the value of that, but it can be solved directly numerically on a calculator or on an Excel spreadsheet, no problem. The next thing we want to apply that to, and that relates more or less directly to the single stage, is actually now the multi-stage cross-current process. Well, how does it look like? On the one hand side, we have the L dot passing through our equipment, the different theoretical stages from 1 to capital N. And we have now fresh G dot phases that are passing through each individual theoretical stage. They all have the common composition Y0. Of course, now there are also exiting uh, G dots with the corresponding Ys, which you can combine or regard independently in your further process, depending on how your process is operated, more or less, is one thing. Uh, and of course, the L dot is now passing through the, these theoretical stages. I mentioned that already, but the compositions, of course, again carrying the index of the theoretical stage they are leaving. So here the 1, here it's the 2, here it's the 3, and so on. For the general theoretical stage n, both are carrying the index n. g dot n is entering with the composition y0 and the xn minus 1 coming from the left. Now, if you want to wind up with the shortcut method, actually we have to assume that all the g dots are identical. That's exactly what we want to do. So we want to call, or we want to assume that all they are the same and that we just call them g dot. So that's just the g dot. Now, of course, the overall flow rate of the g dots that you have to supply is then the capital N times the, the g dot. So the g dot that we want to account for is that for the individual theoretical stage. And then we realize, actually, if we look only at this first part, we have a thing, single theoretical stage, y0, l dot with, uh, l dot with x0, g dot with y0 entering leaving with x1 and y1, we are able to calculate that because it's a single theoretical stage. Then for the second theoretical stage, we know this flow rate, that composition, we know that flow rate, that composition. So we again have a single theoretical stage where we can cal calculate the x2 and the y2, and so on. So with the equations for the single theoretical stage, we are in principle to pass through that process step by step, stage by stage, and that way relate possibly the, our outlet compositions to the inlet compositions and the number of theoretical stages that are involved. And that's exactly what we want to do. So we want to apply the previous equations exactly to this case. For that we want to regard a general theoretical stage small n. 
set up the balance and the equilibrium, then use these equations to come up with what I want to call a working equation, which we then apply step by step and uh, then see how the input and the output are linked. Okay, so we are now in the case of cross-current multi-stage process. So multi-stage cross-current process. And as I said, we want to uh, assume that the g dot n equals constant and we just want to call that g dot. So far so good. And now we want again to apply the balance and join that together with the equilibrium. For the balance we can again set up zero equals. We are again in steady state. Entering is the g dot, which is now the same for all theoretical stages. The composition is always the same because it's taken from the same overall inlet flow rate, so it's a y0. For the theoretical stage n, the entering stream was L dot, of course, and it had the uh, liquid composition, the, the L dot composition is not liquid, it can be any uh, phase. Um, it's the L dot with the n minus 1 coming from the left because we were counting the uh, theoretical stages from left to right. Now we have the exiting streams, there the indices are simple because the indices are always chosen such as referring to the state, the state the fluxes are leaving. So it's an xn and a yn, of course, with the corresponding flow rate. So it's a g dot yn minus l dot xn. And we also can write down the equilibrium as before, the yn equals kxn plus c. So in this case, we also want to use this generalized form where we have this additional flexibility with respect to the c. Now, actually, we, what we want to do, we want to um, substitute all y's by x's. Unfortunately, we have a y0. And of course, if you want to have a systematic nomenclature, we want to replace that by an x as well. So for that, we want to assume that also the y0 can be written as a k x0 star, we want to call it that way, plus c. So we define a hypothetical x0 star. It doesn't occur anywhere in the, in the equipment, but it's just defined as being in equilibrium with the y0, which is entering into the process. So the x0 star is that x that would be in equilibrium with the y0, which is entering into the process. From that follows, of course, in principle, that the x0 star equals the y0 minus c divided by k. So we can do the calculation either way. Okay, now we want to combine these things. Uh, so plug the equilibrium into our balance as always. And what we obtain is of course zero equals. Substitute the y's, the y zero directly. So it's a g dot. And let me first keep that uh, composition in brackets. So it's a k x zero star plus c. Now we just copy plus the L dot x n minus 1 minus g dot times the y n, which we can now substitute again, which is the k x n plus c. Now we just copy again the L dot x n. So far, so good. Now apparently we directly realize that uh, here we have a g dot c with a negative sign and here we have a g dot c with a positive sign which means this term cancels against that term. So this generalization by adding the c in the equilibrium doesn't hurt us, it's cancelling directly in the first balance if we set that up. Now as I said already, uh, as I always say, Better rewrite the equation step by step so that we minimize the errors that we possibly make otherwise uh, by doing too many steps in our head. So it's a g dot k x zero star plus an l dot times x n minus one minus the g dot k x n minus l dot 
xn. I hope I didn't make any mistakes. Now the question is, well, how can we proceed with that? Um, hmm. What do we do? We would like to simplify that to a certain extent, and for that we would like to use a little trick. I rewrite that equation introducing that trick. I first write the first term again. It's a g dot k x zero star. But now I want to add a term. It's a plus l dot x zero star. And to make everything correct, I have to subtract that again. So minus l dot x zero star. So overall, I didn't do any change to the equation. And now the other terms, it's a plus l dot xn minus 1 minus g dot k xn minus l dot xn. And the trick now allows us to group different expressions in this equation. How does that look like? Well, again, we have zero equals, and now we can combine these first two terms, which means we have an x0 star times a g dot k plus l dot. These are these two terms. Uh, then we have actually uh, two terms with an xn, which are these, and these two terms have the l dot in common. So let's group that with uh, those exactly that way. So we have an plus uh, xn minus 1. So, so first this term, because it has a positive sign, minus uh, this one. So minus x0 star times the l dot. And now we group these two terms. And there we realize that actually the bracketed term is exactly like that. So it's a minus xn times the g dot k plus l dot. Okay. And now we can realize, of course, that we now can resort that again because we realize that well, this term and that term can be combined. Uh, and if you bring that to the other side of the equal sign, we, and again, this being then positive, so plus this minus that. So we have, first of all, the x n minus the x0 star times the bracketed term we had above, which is a g dot k plus l dot equals now the x n minus 1 minus x0 star times l dot. And now we can rewrite that and now we are approaching, so to speak, our working equation by uh, combining the axes, all the axes, so that way we get that the x n minus x zero star divided by x n minus one minus x zero star equals the l dot over the g dot k plus l dot. And now what we do is actually that we introduce the lambda, lambda being g dot k over l dot. I think we introduced it already, which is the distillation or stripping factor, the extraction factor or whatever, depending on your um, separation you are looking at, at your unit operation. And uh, it's the capacity, equilibrium capacity ratio, uh, g dot with respect to g dot over the l dot stream, if you like. And uh, it showed up in several places already in the previous uh, considerations. Uh, and that way, we, using that, we can rewrite the equation as xn minus x0 star divided by xn minus 1 minus x0 star equals 1 over lambda plus 1. And that is what I call the working equation. And we directly see that that is a working equation because it relates the inlet and outlet streams of theoretical stage n with something at that is entering, which is known, and something about the flow rates, which are known, and the equilibrium, which has to be known as well. So it relates essentially the xn and the xn minus 1, and we can apply that step by step through all the theoretical stages of this cross-current process. So that is our working equation. And now we can step through the process. 
that was theoretical stage one, two, three, and so on. Let's start with theoretical stage one. There, of course, n equals one. Then we can write, well, x1 minus x0 star divided by x0 minus x0 star equals 1 over lambda plus 1. And I always say if you do the, such general considerations, you always have to take care of the end groups of the end equation, so to speak. So here we have to take care as well, because this x0 resulted from n minus 1 being 0. And of course, x0 has a special meaning. It's the inlet composition, which in this case, of course, fits the inlet to theoretical stage number 1 with the L dot stream is exactly our x0. So here it fits. It's fine. Okay, so far so good. Then we can apply that to theoretical stage 2 n equals 2. And if you write the corresponding working equation, we obtain x2 minus x0 star divided by x1 minus x0 star equals 1 over lambda plus 1. And now we can have a look at these two equations and we realize that the numerator here is the same as the denominator there. So what we could do, we just could just multiply these two equations, then this would cancel and we get to the right hand side apparently squared. If we do that, we obtain, well, the, the, it's the x2 minus x0 star divided by x0 minus x0 star being 1 over lambda plus 1 squared. And there we can, of course, say, well, that will happen, that will occur every next step as well, because this is always the n minus 1, which is, of course, that of the previous stage here. So if we write that for the theoretical stage 3, this would be an x2, so which is the same as here the numerator for the second theoretical stage. The right-hand side would always be the same, so we always add a lambda plus 1 as a factor in the denominator, and that way we can directly guess, so to speak, you can derive it at home if you have too much time for that, we can directly guess, so to speak, the final outcome for the theoretical stage capital N. N. Then, of course, the N equals capital N. If we write the balance for that uh, theoretical stage, we get the X capital N minus X zero star divided by x zero minus x zero star is one over it's not correct of course down here this is the n and this has to be the n minus one i was a little bit confused so that's n minus one that is one over lambda plus one which we can then combine with the previous result for theoretical stage n minus one and if we do that we obtain xn minus x0 star divided by, now it's the x0 minus the x0 star, and here we obtain the 1 over lambda plus 1 to the nth power. Also here we have to be a little bit careful and observant if everything is correct. For theoretical stage 2 we saw the highest index here is that of that theoretical stage, here as well, so that fits. The exponent here is that of the theoretical stage regarded, same here, so that equation is apparently the right final outcome of that, uh, that derivation. Now we can of course uh, rewrite that. What we actually want to have is of course an equation that allows us to determine the n as a function of all the other variables, so to speak. And so we have to solve that somehow for the n to a certain extent and on the way to that, we can rewrite that equation and can say, well, the lambda plus 1 to the nth power is now, we have to inverse that ratio, it's the x0 minus x0 star divided by the xn minus x0 star. We can solve that with the logarithm rule, so to speak, for the n and can say the n equals 
it's a log. You can use the natural or the logarithm to the base 10. You only have to do it consistently. I want to use the natural logarithm. It's the x0 minus the x0 star divided by xn minus x0 star as above divided by the log of lambda plus 1. And these are actually our final results from that derivation. And this is the so-called Kremser equation. Of course, I should remind us of the things that we have regarded so far. We realize that we have the x0 star that we have in that equation being related to the y0 minus c over k, or other way around, y... Uh, no, that's for the next one. So that's that, and the lambda equals the g dot k over the l dot. Of course, in principle, we could also do the derivation in a different way. We could substitute all x's by y's in the previous. So here we have substituted all y's by x's. That's why only x's occur, but you can do it also the other way around. It always depend, uh, depends, so to speak, which compositions are given. That defines, so to speak, which uh, equation is then easier to use. This is another form of the Kremser equation. I just want to write it down. And there we get that the lambda plus 1 to the power of n equals the y0 star minus the y0 divided by yn minus y0. And here we also have to, uh, of course, define the y0 star, which is then just kx0 plus c. And there we can, of course, also solve that for the n. n is just the logarithm. Again, you choose can choose, like here, natural or uh, to the base of 10. You only have to do it the same for both of them, uh, whichever you prefer. I, again, prefer the natural logarithm. It's the y0 star minus the y0. So the same as above, yn minus y0 divided by the logarithm of lambda plus 1 as well. And that is, as I said, the other form, another form of the Kremser equations. And depending on which of the variables are specified, one or the other form may be easier to apply. And with that, we are able to describe and design the process of the cross-current multistage process. We can determine the number of theoretical stages that is required for a given separation task defined by the inlet flow rates and compositions and the outlet compositions. And of course, the outlet compositions overall are also balanced with respect, uh, are also linked with the, with the balance. So uh, that is actually why only one of the outlet compositions is finally showing up. In this case, it's the y and here it is uh, the xn. Okay, with that, I'm at the end of this uh, presentation and we have derived the shortcut methods for the single stage as well as for the cross current and the take home message I will only introduce after the next video when we regard the counter current multi-stage process. Thank you for this video and I hope to see you again in the next video.